Let me add them in. Yes. Good. Here we go. Is everybody in? Hello. I think so. Hey. Yeah, they're joining us. Uh, well, fantastic. Hi, everybody. I can't see everybody's uh, names this morning as I'm on my phone. I'm here at the nail nursery. So because we are speaking about seedlings, I thought it would be a good idea to be at a nursery. And uh, let me show you all these lush beauties. Look at that. All these lovely plants and seedlings. Oh, that looks great, eh? Yes. Oh, yes. And look here, we've got the vegetables. Here's Abby. She's also here. Abby, wave to the people. <laughs> look, we've got some lovely vegetable seedlings. So, yes, I thought it was appropriate. So, first of all, I want to welcome everyone on this meeting today. We're talking about seedlings and cuttings. Um, and we're happy to see everybody. Here. Warwick, please tell me how many people have joined. Um, I think we've got about tw uh, 12 people. 12. Okay, so Peter, yeah. I can't see like I can see on the computer. All right, so Adele, uh, Emil's on, Robert's on, Adele Stander, Lothar's here, Anthony, Palesa, Jacques, uh, Sarkis, family, Marianne, and Palesa, welcome. Welcome, everybody, and thank you Peter. for joining us. Peter. Yeah, Peter's also yes. been joined as well, so that's cool. Okay, so. We're talking about seedlings and cuttings, as I say today, and um, it's just so nice to, to walk in the nursery and see all the beautiful things that are here. And um, I think we can start off with, um, it is spring, which is good. So at home, I've got some uh, plants already, or, or seeds already in the seedling trays. Just one moment, Abby, mommy has to be on here now. I can't go look at the monkeys, okay? She wants to show me the monkeys. <laughs> We I'll want to show see the, them monkeys the monkeys too. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the monkeys? Okay, let's go show you the monkeys before we start talking because then I can, Abby will maybe just, uh, uh, the excitement will be over. So let's see, there is a cousin of Abby. Can you see it? <laughs> okay, what other oh. monkeys? Look at these. <laughs> Even a baby. <laughs> and there's a little baby. Now look, They're very I mean, curious. <laughs> they do look very cute, eh? I know with bees, yes. I know with bees, we have problems with the boons. Oh, yeah. The boons get into the hives and they, they can actually destroy a colony actually completely. Sure. Uh, but if they don't do that, they can bump the box over and trying to get to the comb and the, and the, and the awesome highly protein sort of uh, uh, larvae and the honey and all of that as well inside the hive. But tell me about the baboons, uh, monkeys and stuff. Don't you guys have that problem as well with your seedlings and with plants and things? Well, most people do have. I must say, I think our dogs help a lot. And our little yeah. nursery, we've got, we've got tables like these um, at our place. And uh, so they are inside the enclosed property. So the dogs are always uh -huh. there patrolling. So the monkeys yeah. seem to bother the neighbors a lot because yeah. they, <laughs> they don't have that type of security as we have. Right. Um, but yes, definitely a, a problem for in general. And I do see on the group a lot of people with frustration with monkeys just just destroying everything that they have. And everybody is always looking for a way to protect their seedlings and their vegetables, etc. So what do you, yes, what would you on that note, what would you what would you kind of recommend or plan quickly? Good grief, yeah. I the think the best dogs. way to keep the monkeys away would be to cage everything, and that is just a lot of work. But but at the end of the day, it's either to cage it um, or to not have anything. So you have to weigh mm -hmm. up what is the best. So definitely, I think the cage option is the best because they can't get in if you've got a nice structure with some <laughs> strong wire. Oh, no. But to, yes, who wants to say something? Oh, sorry, I thought somebody wanted to say something. But anyway, so okay. let's get to the Something seedlings. Yeah. It's springtime now and it's so lovely. I've got things coming up in my garden, in my seedling trays. I've got milk thistle, stinging nettle. Um, my tomatoes, my 35 varieties of tomatoes are coming up. I think about half of them have reared their heads. Um, and I've got many other vegetables in the seedling trays that are coming up. Uh, things like yarrow and marshmallow 
and um, oh, and I've got two blue butterfly peas, and I've been trying to grow these things for like forever, and oh, yeah. I just never got, got it. So a friend of mine, her name is Lamas, uh, she took one seed, I gave her only one, and then she took it and she got it growing, and uh, <laughs> that encouraged me. I put my seed into her little, she made a little greenhouse with a Coke bottle, and then mine came up too, so now I've got two of those, so I'm really, really excited. So, um, how Great. do we plant seedlings? Um, in what containers can we plant? So I'm standing here at the nursery and I'm going to show you a few little, a few ones. I'm hoping that you can see properly when I show you. Mm, um, go for it. You get, you get the foam trays, which yeah. you can see it's quite small. Um, I, I prefer, I don't really like them to be honest. And I'll tell you why just now you've got the plastic, which is a bit bigger and you've got these, these containers and then somewhere here should be bags. I even use bags sometimes. Um, the problem I find with these small foam containers is that uh, the seeds seem to wash away. Um, and it doesn't matter how careful you are, you always seem to lose a lot of seed. Oh, and there's Abby's snacks, can you see? Anyway, <laughs> so uh, you, you always seem to lose a lot of seed in these uh, trays because there's not a lot of space to, to put your seedling mix in. So this is why I don't like these particularly. The ones that are plastic are bigger and it gives you more space to work with. But I have found my favorites, which um, I showed on the episode, What to Do with Poo. And those who haven't seen it can go back and go look at the episode, What to Do with Poo. And my favorite is definitely the Moo Poo Pots. Yeah. Um, you can create as much space as you want to inside there. Um, and it really works well. Now, I also know Emil made some stuff. Maybe Emil can just tell us what he made because he's also got an idea for seedling containers. Um, Emil, can you unmute and just tell us about your seedling containers, please? Emil's still there, right? Emil, uh, Emil hold on, Emil, I can't hear you. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I've got really bad hay fever. Um, they've been oh, no. they've been spraying with helicopters and planes for the last couple of days here in Tolba. So uh, oh. that's not good at all, eh? That's horrible. Yeah. The bad part of spring. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. Um, I make a little seed pot maker for living seeds, where you can make a seed pot using newspaper. Um, and I've been using those and then also I've got the, um, the soil blocker from living seeds, which gives you, a, um, a, a soil block that you can then plant in. And obviously the beauty with a paper pot or a soil blocker is that the roots of the, um, the seedling air prunes. So you get a really nice dense root ball and there's no transplant shock. Because what I found, especially with those little polystyrene ones, is that the roots actually stick to the polystyrene. And when you when you take the seedling out, it doesn't matter how careful you are, you're going to damage the roots. Um, so I find I find my two options work really well. And I don't have access to limitless amounts of poo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, for those on the homesteads, the poo works well because I find the same advantages that Emil is finding with a plug master. I'm finding with the cow pots, the moo poo pots, um, and it really is uh, working well. And the, the the plants adjust really well when you plant them out. So, thanks, Emil, for that input. Um, I think that it's important for for those, as you say, that do not have moo poo because some of them, for some of us, stay on an urban homestead. And it's really hard to keep a cow there. <laughs> so, so yeah, we must look at all our options. So I tend to agree when, um, when you say um, the plug master or the moo poo pots or even the newspaper pots work better than, than the, the polystyrene or the plastic. Um, I agree with that completely. So, so when you are looking to buy something that you, or, or make something for your seedlings, look at something like, a moo poo pot or the cow ma uh, the plug master or then the newspaper pots which is also very well done because you just put it like that in the soil 
and the roots can go right through it because it just this the newspaper decomposes so quickly it's just not funny now, oh, toilet right. rolls toilet rolls are a little bit sick so a lot of people yes. have found that that it stunts the growth but then also yeah. the, the big benefit with using um newspaper and the muku and the plug master is that you eliminate all plastic from your gardening so you can Absolutely. go plastic free and those those little black seedling trays they don't last forever either um, no you can use the maximum like two seasons and that's yeah. it and then you have to throw yeah, them away i great, totally really agree quickly. yes yeah so but, i've but, got but, some seedlings now as well that i've that i've uh, and seeding trays that i ordered off online and i mean they're quite quite well designed and everything because they've got a they've got a base where the where you can put extra water in and, and it'll draw from the floor and then it's also got um, a little a little see-through lid that goes on top to make it like a greenhouse so it's really oh, nice lovely. Designed, really cleverly designed but what i'm finding is exactly the same thing is that once the ceilings got to about that high i'm now trying to get them out and getting yeah. them out is an absolute nightmare I mean, yes. I've broken, as Emil was saying, I've broken roots, uh, you know, the, the plants just, or they've come out completely loose or whatever. I just can't, even if I'm squeezing the, the pot itself and all that sort of stuff, it just hasn't really been conducive uh, with potting soil in there. Um, so despite the fact that they're really nicely designed, they, the, the, the actual pot size is too small to be able to manage and get, totally. the, get the seedling out properly, you know? Exactly, and to get sufficient growth, to get sufficient growth, yeah. because the the smaller the the seedling tray is, the 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 longer it takes this vegetable to get anywhere, and the more the the roots are constricted in there, mm -hmm. and the bigger the transplant shock is. So it's really, I don't know, hey, uh, uh, these big guys, these commercial guys that that grow seedlings for farmers, yeah, sure, that's fine, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they use all these chemicals to get them going. They they when they take out the seedling, they put it in a chemical solution that boosts the seedling and then they put it in the ground with fertil chemical fertilizer. But we, none of us want to do that. So, so yeah. I think it is better to, to, to move away from, from the polystyrene and the plastics and go towards the plug masters and the mupu pots and the newspaper pots. And um, uh, just to give you some, some, some uh, information there for those that didn't see it, the mupu pot is literally just mupu. Uh, and the fresher the poo I can find, the better. So I stand there and wait uh, until a cow poos and I pick up the poo and I, and I make my cow pot. Um, and then I just leave it in the sun to dry for like three weeks or so. And I plant directly into that. Um, I know a guy down in Cape Town, he has uh, got a contract with the abattoir and he goes fetch all the pensmiths, whatever pensmiths is in English, but it comes directly out of their stomachs. And that is really, uh, it can be used immediately as well. And, but it sounds a bit gruesome, but <laughs> it, it, it can be used immediately. Um, Emil, tell me quickly, what are you, what is used in the plug master? What is the combination of uh, ingredients that are used in the plug master? Um, it's sifted compost, coca, coir, uh, vermiculite, perlite, and then some worm castings. Um, there is a recipe um, on the Living Seeds website. So you, you just go to the soil blocker and then there's a recipe um, for okay. that soil mix. And cost uh, implication uh, for, for that, that type of mix, it kind of sounds to me that it could be a little bit expensive. Can you um, possibly give us some info on that? <laughs> I don't know because I make my own worm castings and my own compost. Okay. okay. Um, we do have quite a few of the tribe members doing that too. Yeah. And then so, I've so, got, we've got a wholesale nursery here. So I normally buy a big bag of vermiculite and a big bag of perlite. And that lasts okay. me a, a really long time. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about money wise there? What are they, what are they like a bag? Give or take. I don't know. I've still got left over from last season. Um, like okay, well, the bag. I'm, stand, I'm standing here by perlite. I don't use perlite. I use vermiculite, but look at the perlite. I've got it here. It's 55 yeah. rand. Here's my hand on the bag. Yeah, that's and, cool. um, so this is about how, uh, how much you get for 55 Sorry. rand. Really Emil, like how 10. much of this do you use? Do, uh, do you use for one like uh, seedling? No. Um, was that a silly question oh. how far will you or how far will you come with this bag for instance of perlite because i've never used perlite before um 
Yeah, that will probably last me. Um, well, I do a lot of seedlings. Just my, I, okay. I've got nearly a hundred bean seedlings. Sure. Um, so I probably use about three of those bags in a season. Okay. Um, for all my seedlings, and that then that is okay. for the 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 soil blocker and for my paper pots. Right. Okay. Um, I wanted to check. Um, I've I've recently tried actually. I don't know. I don't. Um, I was talking with my daughter about doing seeds before I before I bought these plastic trays, which I, which I thought were really awesome. I was thinking, okay, what are, what can I do that's different that I already have that that could work potentially. And I know uh, you mentioned toilet rolls, and I'm always looking at ways to recycle toilet rolls and uh, paper paper towel rolls for some reason. I don't know. It's a bizarre need of mine you know one of those strange things and um i'm like thinking you know i can always make a little tower paper t uh, castle tower toy thing with it or whatever i don't know spaceships i'm like trying to go back to my youth there i don't know missed youth maybe <laughs> but, <laughs> but having said that i was like i checked out uh, like you know obviously we eat eggs at the house and i was like oh these egg cartons they're paper based right hmm. so if you just take the the sticker off what do you guys think of that as as a as a medium for potting, for for seeding pots? Could that work? Well, the egg the egg trays can work. However, once again, your space is very restricted. True. You've got but a small you... area. It's 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 smaller than this. It's a bit wider. It but is a bit wider, it's, yeah. But it's not so it's, so deep. It's a bit shallow, eh? Exactly. So so I don't know. Uh, it's it's a good idea if you've got nothing else. But yeah. it's not something that I would use all the time. And and the thing with with the uh, with the egg cartons is the moment you start watering, they decompose really quickly. They just go all what's the word? I don't Wonky. know what it is in English. Wonky, yeah. Yes. That's what very, happens. very quick. <laughs> and then and then they fall apart and then you've got a problem with that. So yeah. so it That's is an what option. To mine. But no, it's I use, oh, is it? <laughs> I use the egg carton I use the egg cartons as bedding in my worm farm. Okay. And it oh, also a just idea. absorbs a lot of the the liquid, so you don't end up with a, All right. a soggy and, mess in your yeah, worm farm. And like, okay, so chemical wise though, because I actually only just thought about that now. What about? I mean, could there be any leaching of whatever's in those, or whatever they use to actually make those those egg things? I mean, I know it's paper, uh, but about the rest of the chemicals involved. I've do never. We, do we uh, need to be concerned about that? <laughs> I've you. never seen anybody complain on on the. The worm farm groups that I'm on. Uh, so then it must be good, eh? Yeah. If it's not um, hurting the worms, it must be all right. Yeah. That's um, cool. I just went and fetched, this is one of my bean seedlings in a little paper pot. Oh, beautiful. And oh, good. This is probably show us about... Again. Yeah? Just speak while you show us. So the screen um, this goes is probably to you. about two and a half weeks from sure. planting. It germinated within five days. Um, and I've got about probably about 95% germination and everything's, um, all my beans are saved seed. So, okay. Um, Perfect. So you're basically keeping el your own heirlooms. Yeah. So basically this, I would now just go and plant like this in the garden. So there's no transplant shock whatsoever. Um, and That's also fantastic. Be, um, your normal black tray is only about half the size. So you've got yeah. another half more soil. Um, and my yeah. mix has got vermicast in as well. So there's quite a bit of food in here for, for the seedling to get nice and strong before I plant it out. And, yeah, the, and a newspaper like doesn't fall apart like, like the carton does. Um, no. So, yeah. so that, that does help. All no, right. I, made a big, no, I made a big box that I pack all my seed pots in. Um, I've also banned the cats from the growing area because they want to go and lie on top of them and obviously then they will crush. Yeah. My only concern with the with the newspaper, right, would be the same one I, I have with, with using it when, we, when we're doing beekeeping uh, with regards to the um, using it as smoker fuel, um, which is basically the the fact that uh, the ink the ink can... Um, you know, the, the ink can cause, it can transfer. You know what yeah. I mean? The ink that's on the newspaper can transfer by when, you, when you're when burning it, basically, as yeah. smoker fuel. 
I don't know if there would be any major concern in, in terms of that. Um, all all oh. newspaper ink these days is soy based. So it's a plant based oil. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. Plant based ink um, and non toxic. All right. Uh, I don't think it was like that when I started out 16 years ago. Yeah, that's good to know now. A good number of years ago, there were some okay. really nasty inks, but it's all gone. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, okay, gone cool. So that's all changed. That's good to know. Perfect. All right. That's cool. Um, so it's Mupu pots. It's the, so the newspaper pots. Are you literally just using like paper mache type, type of setup there with the, with the newspapers? Um, no, it's a, strip, it. it's a strip of newspaper that's 10 centimeters long or mm -hmm. wide. Um, I use those, uh, the junk mail, and then that just get, gets wrapped <laughs> around the pot maker. Um, Okay. If you give me a minute, I'll quickly go and fetch the gadget and then I can Please do, it. and then you can show us. Very, uh, please do. And while we're yeah. waiting for Emil, I'll just show you some more monkeys. Look at this one screaming at me. <laughs> they are so cute. Anyway, um, okay, we're waiting for Emil. While we wait for him as well, um, we can talk about the inside. What, would, what do we put inside if we do not have the Mupu? Now, the, the ideal mixture would be um, a third compost. Um, a third, um, oh, you know, now the, the word has gone uh, peat moss. Peat moss is like a, a third of that. Uh, th that would be ideal. And then you must put vermiculite and a third sand. That's, that's the normal recommendation for what should go into a seedling mix. Um, however, many people have experimented, experimented and put other things in. I put, for instance, a lot of worm vermicompost, which I also make myself. I've got two huge worm farms at home. And um, I get so much out of those worm farms. So I take mine, um, a third vermicompost, a third uh, mupu, and a third sand, and then I add some vermiculite. And the reason why I add vermiculite is because it's really hot here where we are in summer. Right. And the seedlings tend to dry out really, really quick. So if I do have to fill something up and I don't have mupu pots, that is, that is exactly what I will do. With the mupu pots, I don't add vermiculite. For some reason, it just keeps its moisture well. And, um, and it just works really, uh, really good. So it depends what's at your disposal. Um, but as an organic as possible for those that don't live on a farm. Uh, and for those on a farm, it's just so much easier. Um, is there anybody else on the group that wants to comment on the contents of their seedlings that they have something else maybe that they are adding that's working for them? Is there anybody else? Okay. You're not seeing anything? Don't anybody see any wanting to unmute? I don't, don't see anybody at the moment. No. Okay. And Emil's oh, somebody's not back. saying, Adele is saying, she typed up, um, she used palm. She uses palm peat. Okay. All right. A lot of people use that too. Yes. Very good. I've actually got a friend that takes the palm, the palm branches and puts it through a, a hammer miller. What is that in English? But anyway, a hammer miller is what the farmers use to grind up their, their maize, etc., for their cattle. Um, and then you get the most beautiful palm peat out of that. So definitely mm -hmm. something that can be used. Um, so, yes. I know macadamia, macadamia shells. Um, yeah. When I was working with a with a macadamia farmer, um, that's actually funny enough. Anthony Anthony Porter knows. He's, he's, he's just left now because he's got a meeting. He says bye guys, bye Anthony. Thanks for joining. Sorry we're a bit late, but uh, we just had some technical issues this morning with audio. But uh, audio on location, you know, filming on location. Yeah. And it's, it was it's yes, it's my pro. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, it was me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, anyway, so the, this guy was based in Nelspreet. He's based in Nelspreet still, and he's got a macadamia farm. And with the shells, I know they used to take the shells and they used to grind that down and make a make a, a mulch or a kind of a seed uh, or growing, um, uh, yeah, almost yeah. like a fertilizer with it, you know? Okay, well, I wonder, uh, I wonder so if quite, anybody has, yes, yeah, sorry. That's, sorry, I think that's, you know, that could be quite a cool idea if people are growing, you know, what to do with, what to do with your nut uh, shells. <laughs> you <know>? Yes. <laughs> nuts. I mean, your shells of your nuts. <laughs> yes. And, um, 
uh, yeah, don't don't just toss them. You know, I mean, aside from actually, they make really good uh, burning fuel, not for beekeeping per se, but uh, just in terms of frying. You know, for brides um, and for nighttime, nighttime, just for nighttime fire fire pits and stuff. Aside from that, and then you can use the ash of after that as well, obviously. Yeah, but aside from night that, if you, yeah, if you manage to grind, if you have a grinder. Uh, that can handle a hardish, quite you know, quite hard nutshells. Then um, use that as a as a way to to create some really nice nutrient based, um, uh, kind of like a fertilizer in a way. I don't know what to call it quite, but you know what I'm, I, you know what I'm sort of saying. Yeah, a medium, a growing medium. However, medium, I yeah. th- I do I do think that that it might need a bit of um, uh, resting. Uh, to, so yes, it can probably uh, but, yes. So it's not and maybe a bit of water as well. The water yes. interesting and almost like a composting type effect. David, correct. Start. Correct. Um, yeah, I would think Robert, that. Uh, Lo- Lothar says he's uh, he's also got to leave. He says ciao. Um, Robert is saying decomposed pine bark can also be used. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Pine- Pine tree. It's probably like the, uh, um, close to peat moss. It's just broken off over time. Mm. Um, yes, yes, I can imagine that. All right. And uh, is Emil back yet? Yep. There he is. Emil, please show us how that gadget works that you make. Oh, sorry, just trying to manage um, my daughter as well. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so that's the little seed pot maker. Um, it's got a, a top and then um, the base. Right. And then a strip of newspaper. Let me stand up. Um, and then you simply wrap the, the newspaper around the seed pot or around the mold and then fold the bottom in and then use that uh, okay that's going to hold it in place yeah kind of like and the there you've got your little seed pot wow wow Just Emil, did you that. design this um no i didn't um okay sean, sean had one um i just refined the the product a little bit Okay. Just in terms of presentation, but um, but I'm now manufacturing these four living seeds. That's fantastic. Well done, Emil. That's such an achievement. And I hope I hope a lot of us will be be trying those out because I do think if you don't have uh, access to, as I say, Mupu, or then uh, a plug master with all the ingredients that you need, that this is actually quite a really good option uh, and a safe option for your seedlings. So. Um, yes, we can go check it out. Um, Emil, you're welcome to post a link to, to where people can find it in the chat okay. um, so we can see. Okay, so then also what shall we talk about about seedlings? The, uh, the whole thing about seedlings is to keep them moist. Uh, if we don't keep them moist, we tend to lose them because of uh, the heat um, and if they don't get water, they will die. So um, what we do is we've got a little nursery under trees. I, you can see I'm in a shady area at this moment. Ours is not 100% under shade, but it's semi-shade. And we've made these tables with, um, with old pellets. And then we pack our seedlings in crates, um, our mupu pots, etc., in crates on these tables in semi-shade. And... Um, it keeps them, uh, the semi-shades help that they don't dry out so much and we water them every day, once a day. Um, if you're going to leave your seedlings and only water it once in two days, the possibility is that you will lose, especially in the germination process when the seeds are uh, starting to germinate, then you will lose them because once a seed starts drying out, uh, if it started growing, it's, it's null and void, it just dies. So you need okay. to look after your seedlings water-wise and, um, and keep them in a suitable space. So find the best suitable space in your garden or on your homestead. And then you um, keep them there, keep them moist and look after them. Um, I don't know if uh, what your guys' setups look like. Uh, if anybody wants to share where they 
put their seedlings and what works for them. Is there anybody that wants to get give some input? Uh, doesn't don't, no, I don't think we've got anybody uh, at the moment. Okay, um, no problem. Then we carry on. Uh, another important thing about seedlings is uh, your somebody seed Adele says she was lucky to have a sunroom. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, a in sunroom. Wow, that is that is that is the ideal because yeah. when you've got the sunroom, especially you can start early in winter. And I've seen on Facebook, Adele, your seedlings look beautiful, <laughs> and now I know why because uh, you yeah. could have started them long before the rest of us. And I started mine in the first week of August. And I must tell you, my tomatoes are about two centimeters high. And I started them that time already. And I realized that even though I start them early and the weather seemed to have changed, it was still too cold. So a sunroom makes a huge difference to yeah. the growth of your seedlings. Um, so sure. yes, definitely. That's what definitely. I'm using at the moment as well. We've, I've got a little, uh, it's kind of like a conservatory come sunroom and uh, it's Brilliant. I can definitely concur with Adele. I mean, I'm not growing in a massive amount. I've got about 10 of those trays. About half of them are growing at the moment. Mostly also, I took, took a leaf out of your, excuse the pun, I took a leaf out of your book, uh, Tanya, and grew, grew two different kinds of, uh, at the moment, I think it's two, yeah, two, two or maybe even three different kinds of tomatoes at the moment, some cherries and then some normal. But I've also Wonderful. got a bit of coriander coming up. I've got a bit of uh, spinach and um there's a couple of uh what you might call it uh, peas or beans and then um basil we've got a bit of uh, purple basil and then the last thing i've got is some chilies and wow chili. and, and chilies need some heat hey chilies if it's too cold chilies won't germinate and it takes yeah. forever so if you've got a sunroom it really makes a difference it's, and another thing that does make a difference if you don't have a sunroom is a germination pad um if you've got a heating pad then that will help um my daughter what, is trying to get my attention what again, i must yeah, say so. i found quite useful as i say with these with these trays that i got they came with this with this uh, plastic it's kind of plastic lid that comes with them and it basically creates it fits over quite nicely and it creates a greenhouse effect. So okay. even though I actually only watered them once, I've I've noticed I've not ever had to water them since, which was I found was quite amazing. Um, even though there's been, you know, pretty good sun during the day and all of that, it literally just creates its own condensation out of the first water that I gave it. And Absolutely. then all I had to do was keep tapping the lid. And uh, whenever I did that, you know, the drop, the, the condensation droplets that formed there would just fall back onto the soil. It was, it was pretty amazing. And I mean, I've, at some, in some cases, I've had to leave my, especially now with my, with my new, with my little, my own little seedling, seedling, seedling 3.0, mini me Warwick, uh, <laughs> that's arrived last week. I've had to, um, I've, I've kind of neglected my seeds a bit and I've noticed, my seedlings a bit, and I've noticed they've actually done all right on their own. <laughs> Fantastic. And you know what, if you, if you don't have access to fancy seedling trays like Warwick has, um, what we have been using um, is Coke bottles. Um, yeah, you use a plastic bottle and, and that's how we got the blue butterfly pea up. It just was impossible before for us. And then suddenly mm -hmm. with a Coke bottle, it seemed to work. And, and, I, and I saw that uh, we've got some lemongrass cuttings that we are making. And the ones that we put the Coke bottles over are the ones that grew. And uh, the, the rest is just still brown. It's not doing anything. So definitely that closed environment does play a role. And you don't have to go out and buy something. You can just do it with a Coke bottle if you don't have a lovely sunroom like Adele does. So yes. Another thing that we need to look at when we look at seedlings is good quality seed. Um, there's, there's so many, so many places where we can purchase seed and there's places that we've got some uh, the people say germination is really bad. So do your in do your homework, do your investigations, and make sure you buy seeds from a reputable company, and um, that you know has good germination. Some companies have a hundred percent money back guarantee on their seeds, and if you if they don't germinate, then you get your money back. So so look at these type of things because um, then you know you'll get fresh seeds, you will get good seeds. And also, obviously, us being homesteaders and being self-sustainable, we want to look at the non-GMO option, the heirloom seed option. So um, 
my favorite company, uh, I, I am biased. It, it used to be my son's. My son was Durant's Ellen Seeds. He sold it in December. Oh, I see your tray. Uh, we'll talk about that in a mo. Yeah. So, um, so um, his business was Durant's Ellen Seeds. He sold it in December just before lockdown to another homeschooling family. And he wants to kick his own butt because after, when lockdown started, seed sales quadrupled. And uh, wow. just like, oh, lost opportunity there. So that was my favorite seed company, obviously, my 12-year-old son's company. Awesome. But uh, I do have other favorites too, like Living Seeds. They have really good seed, uh, seeds and seed quality. So um, look at that. Look at where you buy your seeds. Make sure you buy the best quality you possibly can. And you know what? Even though um, you, you look at seeds and you do your homework and you see, okay, but these guys are like one, two rand a packet more expensive. Oh, but they give the, the money back guarantee type of thing. It's worth it because if something goes wrong, you can contact them and say, listen, I did everything this and this and this way. So look at these things. It's normally a sign of a good reputable company that's willing to, to reimburse you if something does go wrong. Okay, uh, Warwick, please show us your little, your greenhouse, your sunroom uh, <laughs> that you were showing just now. Yeah, uh, this, so I've got about, um, as I say, I think I bought a set of 10 of these. And what's quite cool, right, is that you've got the lid. Obviously, I haven't had the lid on these for a while, so there's no condensation on these. But um, you get the clear lid, which creates some quite nice condensation. It fits quite nicely on there. And then you've got the black, the normal black tray, which is, as you can see, some, you know, some roots already coming through there, which is going to be a problem when I try and take this out and transplant. Yes. But then what's quite cool is that you end up having this, this tray at the bottom as well, where, you know, as I say, I fill that up, I, well, I didn't fill it up to the top or anything, but I put a, a decent layer there at the bottom, about a centimeter's worth of water. And then kind of left it like that. And I haven't had to, I, I didn't have to water these. These were planted about four weeks ago. Wow. Um, and as you can see, some I've already, I've already had to transplant out of this box, but uh, these Fantastic. guys are a little bit slower. What have I got here? I've got uh, lemon balm on the, on the, on this side here coming up. And then these, uh, I had, cause I have the little uh, thing there, but I see this one. Oh good. You're marking there. your seeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ones in the middle here are, are, are chilies. I remember putting those in, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's, a, it's a clever idea. It works Very just as much. well, I think, or just as much as your as the uh, the, the two liter plastic bottles. Yes, or even the one, absolutely. Or even the one liter plastic bottles, you know. Yes. But um, well, that looks good. Yeah. So I mean, the only problem is, is, is as we've said, you know, they they um they only last so long. And trying the problem was for me was getting the stuff out because trying to get it out of the out of those boxes and into the into some some uh, some bigger sort of planters and even outdoors is a, is a mission i think i've i've lost about five ceilings actually by sure. doing that even yeah. though i was trying to be quite careful but um you know so be it that's just the way the cookie crumbles i see adele yeah. just commented she says she's got five different kinds of tomatoes um but still waiting for a seed swap box i think that's from zanelle then so Al's uh, oh, big, yes. big seed swap oh. group. Uh, and then she could be planting some more depending on what arrives. And she says basil as well in the bottle greenhouse. It sprouted really quickly. Um, she says seedlings obviously make, they're great. You know, sought after seedlings are really great. And I think it is important to just note, I think we, I know we've talked about this before, but I think it's really important to reiterate that, it, you know, the difference between like GMO seeds and yeah. heirloom seeds. Uh, while we're on the, while we're on the point of talking about seedlings and seeds, mm. choosing seeds. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I follow a lot of the, a lot of these online um, uh, legal groups that, that, that do a lot of work against Bayer and Monsanto, Monsanto because of the bees, but also because, you know, the crops, crops and bees are related, you know, they, they go hand in hand and mutually exclusive really, aren't they? So, um, and uh, there's so much work that's being done on GMOs at the moment that it's a bit ridiculous. And um, I think it's highly important that we we keep, you know, I know there's even some countries up in North Africa where it's now become illegal for people to do seed swaps. You know, it's become illegal for people to plant non-GMO seeds. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's all about uh, food because, control. Because if I because if I plant my if I'm farmer A and I've I've got a, I've got my piece of land next to farmer B who's got GMO seeds, 
farmer B is now either being given those seeds by the, by the first round of seeds by the farmer, or uh, he's gone and bought them. Whichever way it is, he or she's gone and managed to get hold of these GMO seeds. And now I'm sitting next to him or her, uh, no GMOs, and I'm saying, well, okay, well, I, I can't control what happens with wind pollination or not. But what happens then is that they can then sue me, and they have done this, and are presently doing this, um, they can then sue me or have my crop tested for GMO features upon harvest and then uh, actually claim a portion of my harvest of my crop nice. because it's, it shows that, that there's uh, GMO features present, you know? And I mean, that's just, I understand where they're coming from to an extent, but it's, it's also out of, you know, it's not, it's out of your control, isn't it? I mean, you can't go, Absolutely. you can't go put up a fence because somebody decided to start growing GMOs next door to your, to your property. You decided not to. That's my right. And so is their right, you know, but yeah, it's becoming a little bit, uh, seeds, seeds and, 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 um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, self, self sustainable growing can be, you know, I know in America, in some states, you actually can't grow your own food. Do you know that? It's illegal to grow yes, your own food in your backyard. It's, it's crazy. I'm like, how the hell did that ever happen? How did that yeah. basic right ever be removed from anyone on this planet? You know, it's similar yeah, to what's I, I, happening now with COVID. All the, all the, and I understand why there's such a, you know, people are like not wanting to get people to be more sick than they have to be or whatever the case is. But, you know, uh, our civil liberties right now have been uh, almost completely wiped out. You know, where, where does that lead to now? Because anybody yes. leaving home, anybody that's out leaving home can get sick. COVID or no COVID. I mean, what the hell do we think people did beforehand? We left home, you touched stuff, you got full of germs, you came home, you washed your hands, you ate, you, ate, you went to the loo, you shook hands with people, you hugged people. I mean, come on, you know? I think I think uh, worried with all these things you are saying, all these um, these groups coming up, homesteading and and being self sufficient, and and these people have like minded um, ideas, and we are all rising up against this and saying no, we we will we will all use heirloom and non GMO seeds, and I think the more the mindset of the people are changed, um, the the more it will be and it will start to dominate because. Um, these giants, as you said, they do not have much mercy and it's not even anything to do with you. It's their, their uh, things uh, coming onto our farms. But the more that, that we educate the public on this, about heirlooms and on GMOs, the more people will get involved and the mm. more these heirlooms will start coming back. I mean, um, you, you used to see only orange carrots and one type of tomato. And now, I mean, I'm alone planting 35 different varieties of tomato. When, when in your life did you see so many tomatoes? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm crazy. not the only one. So the mindset of the people are changing, which is a good thing. So, yeah. so we must just keep educating the public. And also then uh, these groups are starting to grow at a massive rate, um, which Indeed. is very helpful. And yes, and uh, the thing about it is it you know it's 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 things like when we're doing work you know the, this kind of stuff that we're doing now you know that's bringing bringing to all kinds of people both people that are doing you know looking at doing self-sustainable living but also something like beekeeping and the two of the things are mutually exclusive you know and that's why yes. I think it's such a good you know and I'm gonna it is a pun but it's such a good cross pollination <laughs> between our our groups and our tribes because our Absolutely. tribes because literally. Just about anybody that I'm talking to about bees wants to or asks about growing stuff in their own yard, you know, on their yes. plot, on their small holdings, <laughs> whatever the case may be. And and then they get involved in that too. They start becoming, you know, carpenters and they become arbiters and they become gardeners. And it's just, you know, it's just this wonderful uh, experience, like um, what do you call it? Holistic experience, you know? And I think the same thing happens with your tribe right? Yes, you guys, absolutely. Once they start so, on something like, and then they get hooked, it's like the, literally you get, you know, the bug. You get don't, the, don't get me started on seed addiction. There is literally something like <laughs> seed addiction, I think. Really, eh? Um, seed <laughs> yes. trade. 
see trading and, and speed addiction oh, oh, better than a lot of I, other things I can think of. Eh? Yes, <laughs> and and I'm waiting for my box from Zunel too. I also took part in the last trade. Ah, I'm really excited. Cool. For those who you don't know about the the biggest seed trade in Africa, it's the the group's name is Bestowed in Abundance. It's run by Zunel Morkel. Uh, what a wonderful lady. Uh, if you haven't met her, take time to to find her on Facebook and her group and join. And and I can tell you this Watch much. Watch replay when we had her on as a guest. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we had a we had a, a session on that. And these boxes are so wonderful. You get so many seeds coming back, etc. But yeah, um, it's really a good opportunity. And while I'm while we're talking uh, about this, I've just realised there's something that we haven't addressed on seedlings yet. <laughs> something that's so important. I'm going to show you what it is. And uh, look at that. Can you see? And yeah. there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Can you see? A marker. Yeah. Oh, Markers. my goodness. Markers. I am a, I am addicted <laughs> to seeds. And I've planted so many seeds that I don't know what it is. And I'm like, then I put on the group, what did I plant here? And, I'm, and I've learned so much from that because I used to be this whole hayway planter and just planted whatever I want, wherever I wanted. And I realized I'm losing a lot of plants this way because, because I'm bringing in all these wonderful varieties that, that's just not available in South Africa or whatever. And I'm finding these varieties from people that have been keeping it for years and years and years. And it's not familiar to anyone. And I'm like, what did I plant? So yeah. markers have turned out to be a very important part of seedlings. So, um, my kids actually had a game they inherited from somebody, which they didn't play. And they had these lovely little plastic, uh, plastic, like little rulers. Oh, I cut them all up. <laughs> and I used a marker that, uh, that you use for cattle. You get a specific permanent marker. It costs a fortune. It's over a hundred bucks for one marker. Sure. But anyway, that marker doesn't wipe off easily. So I use it and I write down what it is. And those markers I keep because next year I just use them again. So marking your, your, your seedlings is very important. And you do get different types of markers. I see there's some things on the market now, aluminium markers, and, and there you can reuse as well, etc. So there's so many things that you can use, but marking your seedlings is a very important part of, of having a, a successful garden because you know what you plant, especially if you plant a lot and a lot of variety like me. So don't forget to mark your seedlings. Mm. Yeah, it's really important. Name tags, Adele saying name tags. And she's mentioning Baker Creek in, in the USA is also... Uh, Really good with Fant um, heirloom seeds. Fantastic. I love Baker Creek seed. I've got a lot of their seeds and a, a really, really uh, nice company that that has a, a lovely green footprint um, and they are very helpful. So definitely a company that you can look at. They also list on the internet as rareseeds.com. So go look at that. There's, there's some nice seeds there too. Brilliant. So yes. Is there any questions that anybody wants to ask that we can attempt to answer for you? If you've got a question, uh, just unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself or post it in the chat if you don't want to have a, have a, have a talk. Okay, no questions. All right. Um, we were going to talk about cutting soil. I don't know what the time looks like. Let me see. I'll have to put on my glasses. Well, we, we started a bit late, so um, we've probably got about another 10 minutes. All right. Uh, All right. As, okay, we can chat about cuttings then quickly. I yeah, actually think we that. should do a whole session on grafting. Um, because I tried grafting a Yarlamun now and it was not a success. So I'm busy investigating all these other grafting methods, etc. So I think we should get a lot of people that do grafting on a call and we can all learn from them. But just about cuttings, um, it's always nice. It's, it's so lovely when I walk through my garden and I'm like, oh, this is from Jeanette. And this one, it's from Sandra. And I've got my whole garden is full of people, if I can call it that way, because this person gave me this and this person gave me that. And it's just such a blessing. So to be able to take cuttings is a, is a really cool thing to do. And um, things that are easily to take cuttings from, for instance, is rosemary. And who does not love rosemary? So yeah. make yourself some lovely rosemary cuttings. You can make some herbal salts and everything. But cuttings is something that, that, um, that, that, 
that is really cool to do. Now, the, if you're using the chem chemicals, etc., there's a hormone powder which you can put it in. However, um, I put mine in cinnamon and it seems to work. And it's something that I just picked up on one of the groups uh, and I tried it and cinnamon works. And I've even heard of people using honey to, to, uh, to put the tips of their cuttings into and it does stimulate growth. So yeah. I don't know what you guys are using. Um, you can just pop us in the comments there or, or tell us how you do it. Um, but um, when I take a cutting, I do not take a very woody part. I take a nice fresh piece. Uh, green piece and I pop it in the in the cinnamon and then I pop it into like a mupu pot or a similar container right. and okay. I just keep it moist all the time and some of course you need to put in the water so it gets some roots so it depends on what you're cutting uh, but some do need to be left in the water for about a week um, so you yeah you must do some homework right? yeah before yes. it starts getting going get a, yes, give it a bit yes. of a kickstart Okay. So, so cutting, I think, is something that you have to practice. You have to um, take what's in your garden. If you do have a rosemary, take what's in your garden and, and, and experiment with it um, and see what works. But it's, it's really something that can be a blessing if you learn how to do it because then you can uh, multiply your plants this way. Wherever you go, you take a cutting and you just go home and, and go put it in. All right. Yeah, I mean, on the grafting side of things, I think that's something we should explore as well because um, I mean, I, I follow, I think I told you a little bit before, I follow that guy, I follow a couple that um, they're now living in Canada and uh, they're literally off grid, they're completely off grid and uh, they've, you know, built a yurt and all sort of stuff. But he, he's, uh, before moving out there and meeting this, his, his current uh, partner, um, he, he was known as the vegan athlete or something on YouTube. And uh, he's done some amazing, or met some ama people doing some amazing graphs where they, you know, they cross grafting. So you get like, he graphs, you know, they were grafting on things like uh, uh, pears onto um, apple trees and stuff. Yes. Pear and apple together. And then, uh, you know, cherry and um, plum and stuff like that. It was just, it was amazing to actually, I didn't realize you could, you could do that, but I mean, the Japanese and the Chinese apparently are the masters of this kind of thing where they, um, they, they, they've done some amazing grafting uh, of two different trees, you know, and you end up having this red cherry with a, with a white cherry and all that. And it's just amazing. It's just something else to see. But yeah, um, on the monkey side with baboons, uh, just on closing for the for the beekeeping guys is, um, it, uh, you know, this might be something we probably should talk about again another time. Is protecting our protecting our stocks. So whether you're a beekeeper or a gardener, or, you know, self sustainable grower, um, I think it's vital that once you've actually got something to look after, you know, after the seeding stage, you've planted it up in the ground and field, etc. How do we go about protecting it from all the pests and and potential threats that come along. Um, and for bees, I know the one big one, um, besides monkeys, monkeys can't really get into the bees, but the baboons do, and they're nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll go in there. So the best way to, tie, to, to kind of help with those is to actually tie them down and uh, put, <clears throat> put two layers of um, metal rods between, between the lid and the floor and basically lock it down that way. Then the baboons can't if they if they can move them they still can't get inside, uh, but it is a bit of a bit of a mission to do that. Otherwise, you've got to build yourself a bee house, which is like a little shed where you can keep the bees and then feed a little tube from the from the entrance of the colony out 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 of the um, metal sheeting and the bee and then mark the entrance with the on the outside on the metal sheet of the bee house with a color. So that each little entrance is color coded so that the bees don't get confused and they don't drift from one entrance to the next. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, a little bit more difficult to do this in South Africa just because they, they, the bees can tend to drift. But as long as you aren't overpopulating your bee house and you have distinct individual coloring for the entrances, then you should be all right. Yeah. That is so incredible that bees can just differentiate that way too. It's really. Yeah, yeah, they're smart, eh? They're smart little creatures, man. Mommy's yeah. nearly finished. Wait. Amazing little creatures. 
All right, so thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, again, a little bit sort of, um, uh, well, you know, with, with a, new, a new little seedling of my own. <laughs> uh, she's needed a lot of sleep and a lot of TLC, uh, which has meant some, some early, really early mornings and, uh, and sleepy, sleepy days for all of us. So, but uh, yeah, next week, what are we going to do next week? Any ideas uh, offhand, Sonia? Hmm, I haven't thought that far. If anybody has suggestions, they can put it up quickly in the chat and we can yeah, look at that. We can go from there. Um, yes, we can go from there. It being the end of end of September. Um, yeah, what about, I mean, nobody, are we harvesting yet? Are you guys harvesting at the moment? I'm actually harvesting winter vegetables, believe it or not. Really? I'm harvesting okay, kohlrabi cool. and I'm harvesting cabbage and I'm harvesting baby spinach, uh, carrots beetroot? and beetroot. Yeah. I do have beetroot. Uh, yes. What, okay, awesome. So what, maybe we talk about what to do with our what to do with our recent harvests. Yes, we can. And, we can and, definitely uh, because some people still are harvesting, yes. Mm. And definitely. or present, and or current harvests. So yes. then we can uh, we can talk a little bit about bio, a little bit more about byproducts. But that's cool. All right. Thanks guys. Uh, anything, any last minute questions or comments? Well, thank you for joining us, guys. We, yeah, I really appreciate it. And it was really having you here. Um, it was hard not being able to see, see who, all, who all is on because I'm on my phone. Um, but uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you for the inputs. And I hope you guys are enjoying putting in your seeds and your seedlings and that you've learned something and that you can use more natural ways that is more beneficial for your for your seedlings um, and that will give you a better yield, guys. All right. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. See you next week. Ciao. Bye. 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 Okay.